Perfect. And hand it over to you, Sadie. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining this session. My name is Sadie Sosnowski, and I'm located in Germany um, and work since, uh, since about more than 20 years in the training area. So I was in several roles and uh, what I would like to, to give you as a best practice, as an as an lessons learned is uh, based on several customer projects which I had the honor to to support. So and um, as um, my colleague mentioned, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate them uh, to put them in the Q&A box. Uh, we will have time at the end of the session that I can answer them. If there are too many questions, I would like to to take them with me and to answer it later on. So having said this, I would like to start with the first uh, question um, about why do we t talk at least about employee training? What it is for us in, in, in at, as an SAP, why is it so important to talk about it? So, and, and as an, when we talk about implementation projects, it's always about software, about processes, and the, the success criteria is if the people are using the software or not. And this is why we talk about training, about change management, but all these things, the topics around it. And I would like to take you to a journey today to, to give you a short hint what we do what is best practice and how are the steps? What I have prepared for you, if the slideshow is working, let me check. Okay, my mouse does not work, but here in the, uh, we, I can use this one. Um, at first, I would go a little bit deeper why we have to talk about employees. So what are, why are the, they the key for a successful implementation? Um, and then I would like to give you an overview of what needs to be done. So what are the steps which are relevant? Um, a main topic of this session will be the target group specific trainings. As my colleague mentioned, it is not only about approaches, it's also about different tools for different target groups. Here we would like to, I would like to make a little bit a deep dive to summarize it in the key takeaways and give you a few additional information, but please feel free to, to you, um, to ask your questions in the Q&A box. So let's start again, why are employees the key? And for most of you, when we talk about an S4HANA implementation or which implementation ever, but especially in an S4HANA implementation, we talk about harmonization of systems, standardization of processes. And th these are often the goals most of the time, hopefully the goals of a transformation project, which means this comes with a big change for the employees who are affected. So new interfaces, even if they are easier than before, so we have uh, nice and beautiful theories, but we have new processes and the new processes have to be, need to be trained because if they are not trained, the people are confused maybe, they don't know which click to make when, and this is why training is really crucial for as for HANA implementation. Um, when we have a look at the change curve, so for sure, if you don't train, if you don't use change management, then you will master the curve at least, but it will make, take more time. It is not as fast with as it would could and would be with change management and training. So it is really crucial. And so I, I would like to go now deeper and to say we have now, today the concentration on the topic training. Training and change management are um, the two dimensions of the people dimension of a project. So, um, and we had before, a few days before, I guess, we had a change management session. I guess if you are interested, you can always have a look on the recording. Um, and the one is focusing on change management earlier this month, and today we will focus on training. What needs to be done? And the next slide, I always have a little bit fear to show the slide because it's, I don't want to confuse you, but it's an overview about everything what needs to be done related to organizational change management and training in an, in an implementation project. 
You see here six dimensions, um, change strategy, change leadership, change communication, change realization, change enablement, which means training, and also change effectiveness. Today, I won't concentrate on the five other dimensions. I would like to concentrate on um, the training part. And you can see also here um, the, the focus on um, two color codes on end users in blue and on project team in yellow. I will go deeper uh, a little bit later. Um, the main focus here is also to say, okay, when you see the activate faces here in a project, then usually most of our customers think about training, assume that training is relevant shortly before the go live. Um, and the main part of the operational things is shortly before go live, but all the strategic topics has to be cleared in the beginning of an implementation project. So even if you don't know the processes, even if you don't know which amount of standard processes or if uh, customized processes you will use, in the beginning, the, the first things are to be cleared, like the strategy of the training and also um, how you would like to train, which part of, of e-learning and of presence training, how's the culture of your company. So this is really also very important when you have your company culture is based on presence training, then maybe it needs a little bit of a transformation also of the learning culture within the SAP S4HANA project to support people to go this journey with you. So um, I would like to go a little bit deeper in this and Let's take a look on the activate phases of the project and the distribution of the work packages. Also, in this case, you see all relevant work packages, best practices approach from based on several projects which we um, um, supported, um, all work packages that needs to be done before you go live with uh, S4HANA implementation, or you can also transfer it to other projects. So again, the color coding, um, and again, uh, blue, the end users, and yellow, the project team. Um, and you can see here, the, so the very first beginning is that we have different times where we train the different target groups. So the project team needs to be prepared for the project. So you start in the beginning of the prepare phase with the project team training. So and upfront of this, you need to know what to train. We will go deeper in a few seconds in this topic. Um, the end user training should be quite shortly before the train, the go live is, but there is a lot of things to do to prepare it before. Um, when you have a look at these all work packages, it's and it's like a reminder. You have to keep them in mind that they have to be done. It does not say that you need external support to do it. You can have external support by SAP or by partners to support you here, but it's just a reminder that there's a lot of things to do like uh, creation of learning content, like implementation of an authoring tool like SAP Enable Now. All these points, we will go on the main topics. I will go a little bit deeper in um, just the 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 the, the main message here is please consider to start with the strategy quite early because the, in, the, in the time of the realization, there are so many working packages beside the training work, uh, working streams um, like testing that you have to keep in mind that the resources you need usually for training are also busy with testing and other work packages. So, I already mentioned it a few times that we have different target groups in such a training project and that they have different needs. So when we have a look at the target group of the project team, then they need to know to understand the SAP solution. They need to know the standard. And I know a lot of our customers use SAP since years, but it is their SAP. It is uh, with a lot of customization usually. And when they go and would like to have a deeper knowledge about the standard, then usually the project team, even if they are 
working since years with SAP, they don't know the standard. So it's really important to know the standard and to know how the standard fits to the requirements of the, your own company. Also, it is really relevant to communicate with consultants on eye level. When they talk with consultants and they don't know what is in the standard, um, then it's much more difficult to talk on eye level. Um, it's also necessary to, to have the latest knowledge. We have a lot of cloud solutions again, and then it's really relevant to have the latest knowledge. So these are the goals for a project team training. These are their requirements. And this is something what is quite completely irrelevant for the end users. The end users don't want to know the standard at all, and they don't need such a broad knowledge about the content. They would like to know their clicks. In my process, I need my clicks in my application. So it's much more relevant to have role-based training. It's also relevant to, to say, okay, what is their processes and what which click follow the other one? So and to make it as easy to consume as possible to make sure that they are happy with the new solution and that they use this new solution properly. I would like to go now deeper in the project for the project uh, team and to say which tools, which which offerings do we have that uh, you can use and what to use for what. So project team and key users. Oh, and maybe to mention the key users, not to forget them. I would recommend always, based on our experience, to train the key users who are in the process design in the project team to train them as well. Um, they are part of the project team, so it is really helpful when they have the same knowledge than the rest of the project team, like the IT um, team, um, to make them also able to communicate on eye level. So I would integrate the key users, not every each and every key user, but the ones who are involved in the process design and in this phase to, to the trainings. We have... So when we talk about training for the project team, it's always a little bit difficult, even if it seems not so difficult, it's a little bit difficult because um, you need to know what to learn. We have a huge uh, offering about learnings and it's sometimes, I guess, it's a little bit complicated for our customers to know what to learn what. And this is why we implemented the learning journeys, so-called learning journeys. The, Really, it's necessary to say, what is the base of my knowledge? So you have in your project team, sometimes people who are coming from 20 years of SAP knowledge, some of them, but don't know SAP at all. So you have to, to, to level them up, to bring them to one level and to make sure that they have all at the end that they are able to work in this project. So um, when we have a look on the learning journeys, you find them in learningzap.com. I will show you in a second in the SAP help portal and also in SAP learning hub. The learning journeys describe a path to come from one point of your knowledge to a desired one. So you can give therein your roles. You can select by role like administrator, like developer, like consultant. You can also um, start there to say, okay, um, I am an experienced SAP um, project team member or IT uh, member. Um, I have already experience or I'm learning SAP from the scratch. So there are different learning journeys based on your prior knowledge. Um, the learning journeys in learningsup.com, learningsap.com and learning uh, in the subhelp portal and in the learning hub. You can go from the learning journey directly to the offering. So it's easier for you to see um, how to get to the content and it's just a recommendation. So you don't have to follow this learning journey step by step. If you have already an overview knowledge, then you don't have to follow it, but it's a recommendation to make sure that you get everything what you need. Let's start with the free content. I already mentioned learningsap.com. Can you please give me a short reaction? I guess that we have the possibility of reactions. Who of you know learningsap.com? 
just maybe like this or oh, can I see the reactions? I have one, just one. Yeah, I see here some reactions here, some thumbs up. Uh, okay, so I can't see it in my side, but maybe you can tell me how many hands we are raising up. A few ones. A few ones, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's great. Sometimes when I, at this point of the presentation, I don't get any hands. So thank you for the reaction. Um, we launched this site, learningsap.com. Um, to make sure that we lower the barrier to access SAP skills. So there are four free learning journeys, learning uh, SAP knowledge, around about 200 learning journeys, um, and you can use them for free. So the only thing is that the content is in English, which should be uh, quite easy for you. And there is really with quizzes, with videos, with uh, micro learnings, and I would like to show it to you one second. Oh, let me check. Wrong. One second. Oh, I can't change this. Okay. This is Learning Hub. Do you see now my other screen? Just a short reaction. I can see it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, this is learningsap.com. You can see here a lot of content in, in. You see here at the bottom, learning journeys, where you can search also for you. But you can see also here selected by topics. And there's a huge amount now um, for learning content in this learningsup.com site. It's also relevant for the preparation of um, your certification. So, make sure that you have a look at it. And there is a lot of topics in for overview knowledge. And not only the overview, sometimes it gets deeper, but please have a look there before you start with, uh, with a course or with a learning hub or what else comes later on, have a look on the learningsub.com. There's a lot of content in for free. And um, I guess, I would like to now go again back to the presentation. We are here now. So learning journeys we had already, learningsub.com. So um, it is linked here. So have a look at it. I can just recommend it. And there are also two um, learning journeys for organizational change management and learning projects, how to do it, not only the, the content for, um, for, for S4HANA or what else. It's also a lot of content regarding how to make the training for your training groups or how to make the change management. From the free content, I would like to go over to the paid content. So we have for the project team. And it is really for the project team. It's not for, for the end users. Um, they are not interested in the content in the learning hub. For the project team, we offer also the learning hub. So when you ask about the differences between learning hub and learningsub.com, which I presented already, the, the main difference is that you have the possibility to have to use training systems in SAP Learning Hub, that you have different languages, and also that you have um, a lot of live sessions, topic-related live sessions, where experts from SAP are um, there to, to answer also your questions. Um, we released the new SAP Learning Hub this year, um, and um, made it cheaper also to also follow the strategy to make, to, to lower the barrier for the knowledge base. Um, so you can also use, so coming from learningsub.com from the free content, going over to learning sub, SAP Learning Hub for fee. And then the next step would be depending on the group of users and the group of project team you have, also a presence training. So the combination of different tools and different uh, content types is what we um, recommend to our customers and what is helpful also in our projects. 
So the presence training is particularly important for people who are completely new at SAP. You have in a project team sometimes people who come from a different solution, not from SAP software, or to establish a common language. So um, when you have a project team separated in different company uh, in different uh, countries and you would like to make sure that they talk one project language not english or german but a project language that they understand the same when they talk about something then it's always helpful to bring them together so it's uh, not only the knowledge transfer it's also like a change support in this case um when i look at the projects that I supported, there were always a, a, a variety of how much presence training is relevant and helpful for them. So it depends most of the time on budget and also of, on time. So when they have when they are not just directly in front of a project, they invest usually more time for the project team training in presence. When they have a lot of pressure, they try to make a lot of things in a blended way or in a self-paced way. So, and this is the, for the summary of the project team training, it's a blended learning approach. So it's not that you use one of these offerings, it's I would recommend to use a mix of all these offerings to, to use SAP learning sub.com for the free offerings to at first have a look on the learning journeys to see what is relevant for you, then to use the free content to go over to the SAP learning hub and with a mixture of instructor led training. Um, and if relevant for you, it's not for every customer relevant to go over to the certification and what you can see on the right hand side is S4HANA simulation. This is something what I can also, it's uh, like a gamification approach to make sure that everyone in the project and also your management get to know what is SAP S4HANA. It's like um, to support all, also the, the, the feeling for this new software. Makes sense in the beginning of a project or to support the management team. So this is a little bit of the summary. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A box and I will go uh, answer them later. Having said this, I would go over to the end users. I already mentioned that they have completely different requirements. Uh, what they need um, from a training uh, this a few steps are similar in the approach, but uh, a few ones completely different. So this is why I would like to go again on this slide to show you in the color coding um, which steps are relevant um, and to highlight a few of them. So we don't have the time to go in detail in each and every one, but I try to highlight the most important ones, which I summarized here in this slide. You, we, we start again with like a strategy. We have to know what do they need to learn. We go over to the training needs analysis. For end users, there's always to consider a learning content development. So you need content, especially, especially for the end users. Usually you need train the trainer approach that you train your end user, uh, your, your key users to be familiar with how to train the end users and at least you need the end user training. So these are from the most important steps you have to consider in, uh, in um, end user training project. And I would go a little bit deeper in each of these steps to highlight also which tools are recommended and how to do it. What is the, the aim of the, old, uh, the several steps? So when we have a look at the training concept, it, um, it um, determines the, the learning approach the learning architecture, the learning governance. So in the beginning of such a training project, usually you have thousands of people to train, 20,000 of people to train. A few customers have 70,000 people to train. So then there are key topics which have to be cleared in the very beginning of the project, like how to train, how is our learning culture I already mentioned, do we have already an authoring tool or do we need an authoring tool which we should buy up front and implement up front to make sure that we don't have to learn it with the project together? Um, 
who should create content because for sure you will need on own content who should train and um, this has to be discussed in the beginning of the project because um, these questions are really crucial to make sure that you have enough resources in place um, you don't have at that point of the phase of the project you don't have the amount of people that have to be trained in what this is all relevant in the next step but when you have these strategic questions discussed, then it's quite clear, okay, then you don't have to discuss them again when it's later on and when you don't get the resources again. So um, one step deeper after the training concept is the learning needs analysis. And the learning needs analysis, we have this um, for the end users, it is, um, always relevant to do it as soon as the processes are clear. It does not make sense to make any learning needs analysis before the processes are clear because you have to know who should be trained in what process, um, how complicated is this process, how, which format we would like to use for the process, uh, for the training. And as a result, um, you have as a result of the training needs analysis, you have like a catalog. This catalog includes um, the training topics based on the process steps. You have the target groups, you have the amount of target groups. And for example, when you have a very complicated topic, you have also how to train them. So when you have a complicated topic, but less people to, to get trained, then you have always to consider the creation of training content is time consuming. Does it make sense to create something especially for them? Or if you have another group of people, which is um, a lot of people who just have a few steps, not complicated, then maybe it is easier to design at that point to say, okay, I will do an e-learning or a guide in, in app help. So there will be like maybe no presence training for them. And this is the, all these steps are um, are in the learning needs analysis. You have them as a result. Most of our customers, to be honest, are in the very first project not, they are not, um, how can I tell it? Uh, they are not used to do this, this at their own. So if you need support in this point, we are happy to support. We have colleagues, they are able to support you here because this is in the beginning of a project, sometimes a little bit complicated. When you have different waves, then it is easy to transfer it from the one uh, wave to the other one so that you can build the knowledge in your house. But in the beginning, I would recommend if you don't have the knowledge in your house to, to get support from us or our partner. The learning needs analysis, as I told uh, before, is the base for the creation of the learning content. The learning content is always uh, necessary to be created before you start with the trainings and before you go to the rollout. And learning content was formerly just training material like uh, brochures, like uh, documentation or e-learnings. We have a lot of more points that or uh, or content types which are um, possible in a training um, project and which I would recommend in a training project because when you have an e-learning for these small few steps um, I already mentioned then it makes sense just to have this small e-learning you need for some people a big documentation because the steps are complicated it's like a manual you need sometimes process tutorials with interactive demos, practice and test mode to make sure that the people are trying it out. And in a, a lot of cases, when we have a look at the learning curve, then you go to a training, you learn something. And after the training, when you have a two week gap, you have a forget a lot of things. Then it's necessary to get like a performance support, like you you. You push uh, the something or you uh, click on the question mark and you get support at the place where you are. In app help, content sensitive um, and directly in the application. So these are the quite relevant, especially in the fast time that we are because we got so much information around us that it's really relevant to get the information at the point where I need it. 
When we have a detailed look about the creation of the content, I already mentioned that we have a tool in place to support you there. To support all these types of content in a single source approach, um, and this is really relevant because at that time of the project, you don't have time to make different types of content. And it's also, especially after the project, when we have the changes, it's not possible to maintain all these types of content if it is not in the single source approach. So this is why we recommend and a lot of our customers using it already SAP Enable Now. So SAP Enable Now is our authoring tool and it's much more than an authoring tool. The main point that I already mentioned is the single source approach. So you make one recording of your process and you can use it as a, a documentation, as an e-learning, as a, in app help. So this is so different content formats um, but by one single source. Also relevant for SAP, non-SAP content, what is for users quite relevant because when you have different uh, training methods and contents um, for different uh, applications, then it's sometimes the transfer for the users. It's like, oh, come on, is this, this is here left and this is right. And you, you can make sure that it is on the same way. And it comes really relevant in SAP as for HANA project with a simplification to localize and translate content. So really relevant for end users because even if the application is in English, then the description of the, or the, the help description, if it is in the local language, then it's even easier. So if you work with one SAPUI in one language, then I always would recommend to do the content again in local language to make sure that the people understand what where to click and what to use. Even so um, this is why we recommend SAP Enable Now. It's an authoring tool. And in case of SAP s hana and several other um, um, solutions, the solutions come with a standard content. We um, support our customers with, our with a standard content and with a standard in-app help generated with SAP Enable Now. So this is for free. The standard content in s hana is for free. Um, or in success factors or in other things. If you would like to adopt it to your processes, then you need Enable Now. Most of our customers have a look on the standard solutions. Some of them adopt it. Some of them decide that their processes are so different that they would like to create on their own. So it depends really on the standard grade of your project, if you need to do it completely on your own, or if you can use the standard content as a base. So depends on the customer requirements. So the next slide I already mentioned about the in-app help that comes for free and which how to, to, to change it. So if you would like to go here deeper, please let us know. There are a lot of demos for SAP Enable now. Um, we I can uh, um, directly route you to a colleague who is able to support you there. So not to talk so much about tools, I would like to go also about the training delivery. So when you have the training delivery and also the content creation, it's always in the time that most of the people in, in most of the projects, the resources are not as high as so there you, you everyone is needs the key users, the testing and the other project phases needs everything else. So when you talk about the training content creation and about the training team, then please consider that the resources um, are you don't get usually the resources are not available. So what we recommend is to, to think about support in the content creation. If you have some people maybe or a, um, a partner or SAP to support you there, it's completely fine. Then it makes sense to get support in the content creation. But also um, what I would recommend to think about the training delivery. Usually we support our customers with a first teach support, not taking over the training because to make it sustainable, the knowledge in the company, within the company, and to have make sure that the knowledge is in the company, we recommend to have internal trainers. Sometimes you don't have the resources, then we support you also with the prestige support or we support with the content creation, but make sure that the knowledge stays in your company, that the training is 
done by your internal resources. Here, a summary of all these topics I already mentioned. So um, depending on the number of users duration, of courses, you go over about how much training do you need. You have to count from the go live and uh, um, um, ask yourself how many trainings you need, how many weeks you have to start before. Uh, also, a training system should be provided. You can do a lot. I have customers that used Enable Now in the test mode for the trainings, it's also possible. But when you would like to have it on a completely realistic way, then a training system should be provided with including with exercise data, because then you have a, like a life, um, life circumstances for the participants. Um, already mentioned, trainings can be delivered by SAP trainers or uh, key users, internal key users. Recommendation is always to say, build your knowledge in the house, not externally, to make sure that you are prepared for the next waves and for changes. And depending on requirements, you can also have a look on how much presence training and how much e-learning in-app help is relevant. So to summarize it, what we have learned now. So the solutions are for the project team. You start always with an analysis, um, what to learn. Um, and the recommendation is to say, to make a mixture of different training approaches, to make a presence training depends on the budget, on the time you have, to go over to Learning Hub for extend your, your knowledge, to have training as a systematic base um, to make sure that the people in the project team are able to work with the consultants. For the end users, really important is the training needs analysis and the training concept in the very beginning of the project to make sure that you are prepared. Uh, what is um, best practice approach is the blended learning approach to make sure that you train the different target groups based on their needs and, and the deepness of the knowledge. Um, you have to consider about content creation and also to use an authoring tool like SAP Enable Now, which we recommend to create your content. In a nutshell, key takeaways. So what is, um, I hope what you have learned in this session is that there are different needs of target groups and that we have to think about when to train who. So in the beginning, the project team, uh, and then later on um, the, the end users, but to prepare the end users, to have different tools and topics, how to train the people. So enable now for the end users, learning hub for the project team. And the best practice approach is blended learning. And I hope that I, that you are sure with me that adoption is the key, that it does not help to have a solution without the end users are prepared for this solution. I have in the end of the presentation a few further information for you, like the learning journeys for S4HANA or where you can find more information. So these are all linked to this presentation. And now we have time for your questions. And also, if you would like to see the Learning Hub, I have it open. I can also show it the Learning Hub. So please feel free to let me know what is open for you. And I would like to stop sharing and have a look now on the question. I saw there is one in the Q&A box. Yeah, that was a um, uh, question regarding the webinar recording. That's why I answered ah, that okay. already. So I was quite fast. We have 20 minutes left. I hope I was not too fast. No, I don't think so. But if there are any questions, then um, please either type them in or um, unmute yourself and ask the question directly to Sadie. So it seems that we don't have questions. If you want to, I can also show you shortly the learning hub. Ah, 
Good questions. I got a question. Is it planned to improve the user experience of SAP Enable now? It can be quite hard to work with. I know. I know you're completely right. Um, it is a huge tool. And if you compare it with uh, a screen recorder, then it's not comparable with a screen recorder. So it's really, it comes with a lot of possibilities. And my colleagues are working constantly on improving it. So what they have done now in the last update is to make sure that you are able to, to have other media sources and to implement them easily in, or that you can also um, um, connect it with a cloud ILM. So this is completely new. Uh, we improve it also with uh, the, the usage of um, artificial intelligence, but I know the tool is in the beginning, till you get used to it, a little bit complicated. You need a little bit of support and we're happy to support you there, but you're right. So no more questions. If you would like, I would share my screen also again for um, the learning hub because I mentioned the learning journeys and this is learningsub.com site. And here is, this one is for free, just to I'm mention sure. it again. I'm not sharing. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's always the same. If I don't ask, do I share, then I don't share. <laughs> so now you see here, the learningsub.com site. This is the one which is for free, I already shared. I would like to show you also the learning hub, which is not the, the um, this is not for free, this is for fee, but it is much cheaper than it was in the past. So if you're interested here, you can buy it easily via learning uh, SAP store. And you see here also um, my personal learning plan. Uh, you see here internal edition, this is because I'm an internal employee. Um, when you go here deeper in learn, one second, then you see the learning journeys I mentioned. They are in SAP Learning Hub, SAP uh, learningsub.com, and in SAP Help Portal. And you can search here. This is still a little bit of a bug. One second. Oh, I have to accept the cookies. One second. It does not want that I accept the cookies. Okay, let me show you one as an example. And I don't want to show ABAP. I would go to like, let me show you here. You can also search here in the upper front, as I mentioned, but sometimes as you know, when you would like to show something, it does not work as you would like to show it. So, but it does not react on the settings. Let me show you a learning journey here in the for free. So for free is hopefully better to show. So let me show you here learn, learning journeys. Again, it looks like I would like to show it to you. Um, and let me show you here S4HANA Cloud Public Edition Retail. You see here what is in the learning objectives, also who for who, for which role. And you can here start immediately the learning. You can see here also the introduction of uh, what is in the unit one, in unit two, in re unit three, and you can get a record of achievement. It's a digital badge. This is all the for free content. I would love to show you the for free content too, but sometimes it does not work as I would like to show it. So the learning journeys are as I mentioned them, but at the moment, unfortunately, I can't show it to you. Do we have in the meantime other questions? No, I don't see any other questions. Then I, at the end of the session, if you have later on questions, please feel free to contact me via LinkedIn, via email. Or you will also prepare the recording, I guess. So if you yeah. have the colleagues who need support, please feel free to share it with them. All right, then. Thank you a lot, Sadie, for that great um, uh, presentation. Um, with that, I would close 
um, today's webinar session. And the next one is next week, Tuesday. In the chat, I have uh, sent the link to our um, curriculum website. So uh, looking forward to see you all in our next um, week session on Tuesday. Until then, have a nice day. And bye-bye. And see you all soon. Bye-bye.